Hey guys, I'm Mythical Maniac and welcome back to another video. Today in this video, I will be talking about Shiny Pokemon. Shiny Pokemon originally released when Gold and Silver were released on the Game Boy Color. To this day, however, it has been talked about how Generation 1 all the way to 6 to get their Shinies was just using an algorithm where the color palette would just add one number. I thought I'd be doing a new series where I will be looking at the Pokemon I either do not like, dislike, or hate their Shinies and will be fixing them. Of course, there's not a lot of shinies that I absolutely hate. There's some that I dislike, but in my opinion, there's a lot of shinies that are actually really good. So, to start, we will be talking about Generation 1, the Kanto region. To start, we're going to be looking at Butterfree. The reason I think Butterfree is really bad shiny is for one, Caterpies and Metapods are great. The gold and the bright orange red is just a great difference from the greens. And the fact that Butterfree just changes the eyes and a little bit of other sort of palette colors, in my opinion, it doesn't suit. So let's have a look at some of the changes I did. Firstly, this isn't one that I didn't come up of and I think a lot of people talk about. Pink Butterfree. The fact that Bye Bye Butterfree came out before, well, Shinies were really a thing. When we did learn about Shinies, I may not be the only one that originally thought that that Pink Butterfree was a Shiny Butterfree. Like, it's a completely different color and it just makes sense to me. I know, I know they explained it how it's on the special island, they eat the fruit and they turn pink, but to me, the pink Butterfree makes a great shiny. So to begin, that is the first fix for shiny Butterfree. To start, I wanted to use a well-known butterfly that many seem to know and a lot of people like, being the Monarch Butterfly with its great orange color. So doing that, I created this shiny using the orange on its wings and creating its body more of the black gray that Monarch Butterflies have. As well, Monarch Butterflies are known for traveling long distance for the winter, same as Butterfree has been seen to do, especially in the anime with that episode. Bye bye Butterfree. Second one, I personally like a bit more. This one's my favorite one. As Caterpie and the rest of its line is based on a particular butterfly, where Caterpie is based on the Easter Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. And you can see this is its caterpillar form of the Swallowtail and Caterpie. Very similar. So I decided to take Butterfree and use the Eastern Swallowtail Butterfly colors and create a shiny base on that, using the yellow for its wings as well as using an orange for its bow. Body. To me this also makes sense because I think the idea for a shiny Pokemon is they should continue from their pre-evolution all the way to their final. So having the orange from Metapod and the yellow from the Caterpie makes it unison where it's got both of the shiny colors as this final shiny. But to me that is how we fixed shiny Butterfree. Beedrill in my opinion there's not a lot wrong with Beedrill especially not compared to Butterfree. For example the green shinies aren't that all bad. However there is a lot of them and compared to other shinies the greens are not the best. The next idea is taking the shinies already colors and inversing them. Like I said, green's not all that bad. Green's a great color, but to me on Beedrill, it's a little much. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the stripes, turn them green, and the rest of the body black. If shiny's gray and all, however, it's more high tech for a B. I could see this being a color palette of a future Pokemon, but for a Beedrill, not so much. And finally, the final design is based on the Japanese Hornets taking the color of the Japanese Hornets and mixing it with Beedrill's colors, making it a darker orange. Pidgey's line. Again, with the yellowy green, it's not that bad. However, compared to others, it's such a pale light color that to me, it doesn't suit that well. Let's start with this brand new design where we've taken it and created it a bright sun yellow. I like the bright colors a lot better as well as having the now Pidgeotto and Pidgeots like head feathers and tail feathers a bright orange red, allowing it to stick out a little bit more. Pidgeys or pigeons and other sparrows, another bird is the robin, having the red chested feathers. So doing that, I took Pidgey, Pidgeotto and Pidgeot and changed their chest feathers to the red. Now this one does look really cool, however it does look like Pidgey and Pidgeotto accidentally killed a bird and has got blood all over their chest. But if you look aside that, I think the robin sort of looked suits them. Next is Rattatata. Rattatata has the same issue with the Pidgey and the Beedrill line, where it is again the greeny yellow sort of thing. Honestly, I think that's an easy fix. If we just take Raticate's colors where it turns to a darker red, we can fix Rattatata to make it look much more like its counterpart at its evolution, as well as just making it look nicer in general. So with Rattatata, we would easily just change its colors from yucky greeny yellow to an now nicer darker red. 
Next is Nido Queen. Nido Queen has an issue that annoys me deeply. With the Nidoran shinies, I love them. The idea is that the male and female swap colors, where now the female is purple and the male is blue. And this continues for Nidorino and Nidorina. However, it stops with the King and Queen. Nido King does the same where it's still got the blue. It's a little darker than Nido Queen's, but you can still see the intention. However, with Nido Queen's, I, I don't know what happened. An easy fix, make it Nido King's colors. This now makes them all suit together, makes them all unison, and honestly makes me so much more relieved to have them all the same colors now. Next, Jigglypuff and Wigglytuff. Their shinies are disappointing, that say the least. When I said before about how their colors can change slightly and it's still an alright shiny, with Wigglytuff and Jigglypuff, it's such a hard to tell difference that it's not even worth it. So to fix it just with the normal, make the pink a darker pink. So with this, I made a darker, much, much darker pink, but you don't even have to go that dark. The other one is a little over the top, but I still think it's a really cool shiny. Considering Jigglypuff evolves with the Moonstone, I decided to take the moon colors being a gray with a bright yellow being the cartoony version of a moon and creating Wigglytuff and Jigglypuff as the moon. The shiny kind of suits considering Jigglypuff puffs up as it is, making the moon look bigger. Just like the Jigglypuff line, the Meowth line also has sort of the same issue, where when it's changed, it doesn't change a lot at all. So to start, I took some of its inspiration and created a better shiny for it. Considering Meowth and Persian are both based off Siamese cats, as well as the gold, and in a way a little bit of Egyptian, I took that into inspiration, creating a much darker shiny now, based on the darker fur of a Siamese, as well as making both the jewel and the coin a darker gold, being what Egyptians wore around the head, as well as making it more prominent. This one you can obviously see is different. The second one doesn't change a lot. This other design hardly changes much, but it's still noticeable in my opinion that I think it suits. With this, I took the color of the gem of Persian and the amulet of Meowth and swapped them. This doesn't change a lot doesn't change the base color hardly enough at all, but it suits it in my opinion. You can tell that it's shiny compared to a hardly colored change. It's the same with Doug Diglett and Doug Trio, where their nose has changed blue. It's not a big difference, but it's noticeable and it still looks really good. Here is another one that annoys me a lot, being Golduck. Golduck already was confusing considering it wasn't yellow when Psyduck is, and the fact that it's got gold in its name. So when Psyduck turns blue if with its shiny, you'd think Golduck turned gold, or at least Psyduck's color. That's what I did, changing now the Golduck into Psyduck colors, being the yellowy tan with a blue beak to represent still Golduck and now Psyduck's shiny color. Next is the Poliwag line. The issue with this one is similar to what I have for the others, where their final evolution doesn't match the other evolutions. For example, Poliwhirls and Poliwags both have a lighter shade of blue, while Poliwraths change completely, changing to a green. Now, don't get me wrong, this is one of the greens that I actually really like. So, to make it all unison, what I think we need to do is change Poliwag and Poliwhirl shiny to green as well. I also decided to make the boxing gloves red to make it stick out a little bit more and change Poliwag's tail. The other shiny idea is if we want to take the other approach, making Poliwrath now the lighter blue. Now I know in this Photoshop it's a brighter blue, you can tell that, but you don't have to. What I think would look really nice is making the stomach or the spirals a purple. Was there a reason for purple? Not really, I just am biased. But still, the purple makes it stick out a lot more. Even if the blue didn't change a lot, you could just have the purple spiral. And that's all I have time for. I know that wasn't many, but there is still a lot, couple more that I want to talk about. But of course, I don't have the time for it. So if you want to see more and you want to see the rest of these lists, why don't you consider hitting subscribe and coming back to my channel to see the other lot. Um, there's a couple more to do for Gen 1, and then after that, we'll be heading down to Generation 2. So I hope I'll see you all in the next one. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.